This is going to be a long rambling video on how to troubleshoot a bamboo bed sensor problems. Um, so I had a force sensor stop working and then several weeks later the bed thermistor quit working. So all of that is there's a little daughter board right there and the problem is the wire. Now this is on how to troubleshoot that wire. So you can see I've got it patched up. It's pretty ugly. But here's how to troubleshoot it. So first of all, here's your wire. And I'll give you the pinouts here. But notice right there, there's a little arrow. That is pin one. One through six on that connector. So here is the pinout at the main board. On the bed, you're going to have... 3.6 volts normally, but that doesn't really indicate much of anything one way or the other. When you disconnect it from the main board, at around ambient, it should be roughly 120 kilo ohms at ambient temperatures. You're reading the resistor on the bed. But once you turn the machine on, you're going to have that 3.6 volts no matter what. So if you have a bad cable and you measure it at the main board, you won't see the resistance of the thermistor. Um, the force sensor signals are 2, 4, and 5 are the signal wires. And these are voltages in reference to the pin 6, which is common, uh, DC on this printer. So the voltages are going to be under normal operation, you're going to see 1.8 volts uh, stationary. Now, when you tap on the bed, you will notice that the voltage will rise. And if you maintain the force, it'll fall. The piezoelectric sensors, um, they produce a charge when the force changes. If the force is not changing, the voltage stops being produced, the charge stops being produced, and therefore the resulting voltage will fall. So when you push down, the voltage will go up and then fall. And then when you let off, that negative force will drive the voltage negative momentarily, sorry, negative in reference to 1.8. So it'll drive it lower than 1.8 down to a minimum of zero, and then it will come back until you let off, and it'll, it'll kind of do a weird sine wavey thing uh, depending on how much force you put on it. But you should be able to see the voltage change. When you first put your voltmeter on, if the wires are broken, at the mainboard terminal, you will read 1.2 volts, and it will drop to 0 0.9. Um, from what I know about electronics, that is um, that is a floating charge on the analog input circuit of the main board and your voltmeter is providing a resistive load. Um, my fluke there, it's I think it's 10 mega ohms. So it's a 10 mega ohm resistor when you connect it. And that is enough to pull the floating voltage from 1.2, 1.3-ish down to 0.9. If you are reading 0.9 constant at the main board connector, you have a bad wire somewhere. More than likely, it is this harness. It was very poorly run through lots of tight corners. So that's how you know if you have a bad wire. And the same pinout applies to the daughter board end of the cable. It does not cross over any wires. From what I have found on my machine, again, this is all related to my machine. I don't know how rapidly they're changing anything. If they're changing anything, this is mine. Um, so the daughter board has the same pin out. Look for that same little white arrow. That is your pin one. And then um, pin three appears to be the supply voltage for all of the piezo amplifiers. Um, I That never changed in my troubleshooting, but it did 
it, it just remained constant whenever the machine was on. So luckily my pin three was not broken and I had the correct voltage on the sensors and was able to do this troubleshooting um, because I found that for me, when the bed went out, this, I stopped getting resistance when it was disconnected from the main board. And then once I plugged it in, I was getting the 0.9 on these two wires at the main board. But when I plugged in the daughter board, it worked flawlessly. Um, on the daughter board end, I could push on the signals and it worked. So I knew then that it was the wire. Um, it's going to become everybody's favorite wire to hate on in the bamboos. I can almost guarantee it. So, um, oh, and I found the best way to uh, work on this thing. Uh, because of how the cable is routed back there in this horrible bracket that they have. Uh, you can't even see it. It's stupid. Um, so if you have intermittent issues with the force and the bed sensors the and the temperature sensors, it's probably that wire in the back. Um, all of my sensor wires, daughter board wires were all intact. Um, oh, the daughter board, there are some small three pin wires um cables to the 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 sub daughter boards for the front two sensors these are those pinouts um j5 and j6 cables um white arrow number one is the signal what pin two is the v supply and then three is the com pin for those individual daughter boards um so back to troubleshooting this printer um To start working on it, you need to remove the back panel and then, which is a lot of screws and you have to take the bucket out. Oh, it's just, you'll see how much you do have to remove the bucket. You do have to, I had to pull this cable through um, without removing the big AC cable. It was very challenging. You're gonna, that was a dicey situation forcing that cable out. Um, but once you get it out, I'm not putting it back in that hole. The best position and way to remove the bed once you are at this level of troubleshooting is lower the bed all the way down and then remove the, the six screws. There's two on each corner. Once you remove those, the whole subframe the subframe will come out and that will make your life so much easier. Um, the cables are so unbelievably short back there. It's just a bugger, but it's easier if you start like say at a quarter, just give yourself a little bit of room. Um, and then you can take the bed out. Um, yeah, it's a nightmare. Good luck.